Hi friends, it's Andriy Vasilenko. If I ask you to name a cool bass line by Jason Newsett when he was in Metallica, some would go the easiest, the safest way, and call My Friend of Misery. Some who know Metallica a bit better would say Blackhand. Because yeah, even though you don't hear bass at all there, the main riff was originally composed by Jason Newsett on bass, and then James adjusted it for the guitar. But if you say, say, yeah, something like a king nothing and you know, things like that, yeah. Well, you won't be wrong, but not also completely correct. Uh, yeah, that's an off too, you know, that's James's bass line. Oh, okay. These bass lines are prominent, and they were recorded by Jason Newsted because that was his job. He was in charge of bass in Metallica then, but the matter of fact is that he did not come up with them. There was the other man whose name starts with J, and that's not to downplay the contribution of Jason Newsted. We all know how important he was for the band, and his part in Metallica went beyond just playing bass, being the back vocalist and the monster on the stage. <laughs> He was the glue that actually helped Metallica stay together. That came with the cost. We're not gonna discuss the whole issue of Jason Newsted versus Metallica, but, but we just need to acknowledge this pretty obscure part in Metallica's history. That James Hetfield is not only a rad guitarist and vocalist and lyricist, he also plays the drums and sometimes in challenges Lars in that regard. Whoa! Whoa. He's shorter than me. <laughs> but he also can do the bass. And he has a pretty distinct style of playing. Both James and Jason prefer playing bass with a pick, but you can clearly hear the difference between the pick and style. Jason is more of a clean bass player. His attack, dynamic and articulation is perfect. While James is playing bass, it's pretty scratchy sound. And that sound also has a right to exist. James essentially is the Lemmy style of bass. Nonetheless, James' bass playing is spot on, really tight accents. And that's probably thanks to his rhythm guitarist background. He know what is the tight playing. And lock in with the drums. That's basically what came first. He first locked with a larger drum, and then basses tried to fit in. Even Cliff recorded bass after James's guitar and Lars. And it was actually him who taught Ron Magoni, the very actual first Metallica bassist, how to play it. But that part of James just went low key, and only a load reload that surfaced. The method Metallica used to write the songs was pretty much the same on Lord Reload and on Master of Puppets. They collected the riff tapes, mostly by James, and he went down to Lars's garage called the Dungeon. They jammed and they compiled it and made the structure. In a pretty short span of time, they had a handful of songs, they recorded raw demos of it to show them to the guys and the producer as the core of the future album. And originally those very first demos were like just Lars playing the drums and James doing the guitar, occasionally doing some doubles and stuff. <laughs> There was no actual bass on those very first demos, and that would change in the middle of the 90s. James probably just got bass himself. And so they recorded all the demos that way, Lars on drums, and James on guitars, vocals, and bass. Yeah, yeah. And as a result of that, he got some pretty cool bass arrangements, not only just eights and doubling the guitar, but some bass licks which were self-sufficient, some bass intros, and so on. And essentially, almost all of that cool bass arrangement survived from the very first demos to the final studio sessions. And Jason Newsted repeated those leaks almost note for note. And that's partially due to all the authoritarian vibe in Metallica, where Lars and James were the bosses and like, you're gonna do what we're telling to do. But on the other hand, Jason also had a lot of space to work with. He also was allowed to bring cool leaks to the table of Metallica. And a really good riff was always welcomed there. Well, at least think about it this way. 
in the eye of Lars. A good riff means good song, a good song means more sales, and more sales means more money. But the bass stuff that James Hadfield came up with was already good enough, not good enough, but it was great, so that Jason did not see any kind of improvement he would put there. He as a professional bassist saw, it's working great, I just kind of played it like that. With probably one exception that we know of. It's about the Devil's Dance bass riff, which is pretty raw and a bit even stupid. And as the story goes, Jason Newsted wanted to, to spice it up a bit, to change it around so it sounded less dumb. But James Hadfield, who wrote it, insisted that Jason would play it note for note, exactly. And so he had no other choice but to comply. And yeah, I wonder how it would have sounded if Jason actually tried to make it his own way. But in the case of King Nothing, not, it's essentially a guitar riff played on bass. But say in Until It Sleeps, that's a distinct bass line, which I honestly don't know how to improve. It's perfect. One of the ways Jason found ways to make it better was to play it on a different instrument. He used a fretless bass, which had given it that peculiar special sound that Metallica never had before and after. I would also mention the Cure Slap interlude. We don't have a demo for that song, so we don't know what James played there. So I tend to believe that there was Jason's idea to play Slap there. Also make it a very special, exclusive, one-a-time moment in Metallica discography. Everybody good, are there any issues? None. And funny enough that the only songwriting contribution by Jason on the two albums, Load and Reload, was a guitar one. It's where the wild things are. I think I nailed it. Oh, I want Rob's army to go. <laughs> and now just enjoy those licks side by side, the way it was on the studio version performed by Jason and on demo version by James. <laughs> <laughs> 